back to The Sims 4, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to a speed build. Today we're doing a two bedroom, one bath, smaller home in Newcrest, but it could be placed anywhere. I believe it's on like a 20 by 30 lot. And this one's a little bit interesting because I went into it without a plan for design. I entirely went into it with just the idea of improving my floor plans. That was the whole thing. As I was, I had been, I had been studying floor plans a little bit, like real life floor plans, to try to get like the more realism in my game. Not that I care too much about realism, but just I feel like I'm getting a little bit stale in some of my plans. I tend to do like the same little square houses, and I love them, and they work out good, um, and they're very much a fun canvas to build off of. But I want my floor plans to be more interesting too. I think it's really fun to play in houses that are designed differently. So this, is, this one's similar to what I do often. It's a little square home, but it's definitely different. The kitchen's set up a little bit different, um, and the hallway space is something I don't do a lot. I'm trying to get better at that. My last few builds have had hallways and stuff, but I tend to um, stack rooms on top of each other instead of putting in hallways, which is silly because every house I've lived in has had at least one hallway, sometimes very dramatic hallways. Um, but for some reason in The Sims, I think just because of the pathing and stuff, I tend to avoid empty spaces like that. So I intentionally added a hallway. The bedrooms are very small. It's meant to look a little bit like an older home. Small bedrooms and actually like reasonable sized bath for the home, but it's the only bath in the home. So I decided to make it a little bit bigger. And it is like sort of roughly based off of a floor plan I saw online. It's actually based off of like two or three that I saw online. I was just kind of doing research on like little houses, two bedrooms, cottage styles, things like that. And this house um, has a little bit of life and death in it, not too much because uh, I managed to get my hands in the life and death pack uh, about halfway through this build. So there's, there's a few oats here and there, but for the most part, I think this is mostly predating life and death pack. When you guys are saying it, it's well post-dating it, it's, uh, we're well past when that has come out. It is a very fun pack. I was very lucky to be able to download it on release day and get to play with it. I'm having a lot of fun. And that's saying something because I was, I was really excited about the concept of the pack, but I wasn't sure how much I would enjoy the actual gameplay because I don't love killing my sims. And if we're being totally fair here, I haven't actually killed a sim yet, even with the pack. But for the grim career alone, and for the world alone, I am really enjoying it. I am having so much fun with the crows. I am having so much fun with just the lore of the pack. I really want to try the um, Mortician's Career next. I'm taking the Sim. Um, for those of you who watched the uh, Grim Reaper event, that's what it's called. April Cook in that event, the Sim we were playing. She is now my life and death Sim. She's, she's thriving. She's living in Morningvale. She's having a fantastic time. She's absolutely thriving and she's almost maxed out the uh, Grim Reaper career. So, you know, just so you're aware, she's having a great time. She's very unlucky in love, it turns out, which is funny because during that event, y'all saw that she had a few people calling her and had some fun um, with some single friends and stuff, and one of which I thought was going to totally be maybe her beau, and then he decided to go dating other people and be kind of a jerk about things, and we tried to go on a bowling date, and he like bowled one frame and whiffed it and then just left, and I was like, sort of loser much? So anyways, <laughs> and then we tried to do Cupid's Corner, and bless her sweet soul, she's just not great at the dating thing. It's fine, we'll get there. Or maybe she'll stay single. Who knows? Maybe she'll reincarnate into a home with, like, lots of siblings or something. Who knows? So back to the build here. I put a little patio on the back. This is a trick that has is literally multiple Sims game generations old. It's just fencing done in a crosshatch pattern. And then you put, um, in this case, uh, it's, um... Oh no, spandrels. There we go. <laughs> My brain kept saying, uh, railings. And I was like, that's not right. You put spandrels and columns over it to kind of make it look kind of like a, I think it's um, a good word for it, maybe portico, I've heard it called. Um, and I, I really like that, and then I just put some landscaping on top to make it look like there was some vines and stuff overgrown on top of it. A really um, simple way to add something different to the side of your house. And then in the front here, I ended up going a little bit more, I think this is probably most closely craftsman style. And I will address earlier in the video, you definitely saw me fighting really hard with the roofing. The roofing is fine. It's not my favorite roofing on a house. It looks fine. It kind of turned out cute. I'm happy with it. I really wish there was a better way to do dormers, though. Just, like, in general, I wish there was a better way to do dormers. Because, 
I, honestly, I wish you could put roofs on half walls. And I know, I know what you can't. I get it. It's a limitation of the game. But y'all, it would be so nice to be able to build like attics and stuff that way. My goodness, it would be really cool if we could build, or just like tilt walls, you know? Just like, I don't know. I think it'd be really cool. Paint the bottom off roofs. I have many things. I know they're not going to do The Sims 5, um, and I know we've beat this to death, so I'm not going to continue to harp on it, but that was one of the things that I thought about when they announced that they weren't going to be doing a Sims 5, was some of the build features and some of the gameplay features we had hoped they would listen to us and give, give us in the next game aren't going to happen now. And so I'm wondering, I'm, I'm left wondering if that means they intend to give them to us in The Sims 4. How? I don't know, unless they intend to do an entire under the hood revamp, which would be insane. Let me be so clear. That is not a thing they're going to do. It would be insane because like when you rebuild a car, you can pull the engine, rebuild the engine and stick it back in the car and it can still look like a beater and be like, a, they call them sleeper builds, and be like super fast and super intense, and it's great. You can't do that as easily with a program. It, the, like, with a with a computer program like this, it is a lot harder to just pull the engine out and, and beef it up and put it back in without things just falling apart. That would be insane. But so it does lead me to wonder, like I'm not against the idea of it, and to a point I almost am excited about it because sunk cost policy here. I've put a lot of time and money into this game. <laughs> Y'all have. We all have, right? Um, and so there's a part of me that's like, well, it's exciting to know that I'm going to get several more years of play out of this game. But there's also a part of me that's like, what are we going to do with the system that was aging when it came out? I'm worried. Um, that was a, a long rant to talk about the fact that the roofs kind of kicked my tail on this build, but we got there in the end. And I went with the shingles and, and uh, siding from, I think I believe that's from Growing Together. I love the exterior stuff from Growing Together. It's just very much my style. I love the little like shaker shingles. I love the siding they did. I really love that look. And I love the look of the wood on a porch. I've mentioned this before. I just think it's so cozy, especially if you put cam lighting, especially if you have a porch where it's actually like a livable space. It's such a warm, inviting vibe to have all those warm wood tones. It's something I actually really want to do on my personal porch. My porch has a painted ceiling right now. It's painted yellow to match the house. And I'd really like to put... Well, I say I want to put can lighting in, and I do think I would love to eventually put can lighting in. Electrical is expensive, so when I say eventually, I do mean once I win the lottery. <laughs> um, except for, I think on one side of the um, porch, I would like to maybe put a fan, because we spend so much time out there, it would be nice to have a way to circulate air a little bit better out there, because I really, like, we really do use the porch, I would say, eight months out of the year, and even in the wintertime, it's freezing, I will still go stand on the porch, I love being outside. And I adore our big old porch, but I just think a porch is much more usable when it's warm and inviting, um, and when it's it's a congregation zone, right? Especially if you live somewhere with beautiful seasons. The kitchen, uh, the kitchen is a vibe of its own. But let me tell you, you're gonna be just as confused, I think, as I was when I started this because it took me forever to figure out what this kitchen was going to be. And to be honest with you, I don't think I figured it out until like the very end. It's cute, but I don't even know how to describe it to you. You'll see it coming up. It definitely went through a few iterations. I wanted it to be homey. I didn't want it to look super state-of-the-art. I didn't want it to look super, like, fancy, chef-y kitchen kind of thing. I did want it to look cozy and warm. Those two kitchens do intersect, and she... Uh, kitchens and cabinets, I mean. Do intersect, and she won't um, cook on those, for the record. But you have a bunch of other cabinets, so it's fine. It's okay, and I wanted the look of the like rounded corner there, but I wanted it to stick out all the way because the, this is a thing that they all did. It bothers me so much. Can I just rant for a minute? I'm going to anyway. When they do the, the like side pieces, when they do the like end cap pieces on the lower cabinets, they're shrunk in a little bit. They're somewhere between a half and two thirds, right, um, of a full cabinet. But they don't do that with the uppers, and then the uppers and the lowers don't line up. And I know it's a silly thing, but the on the uppers, when they do like the end pieces, it's like seven eighths, you know? It's too long. And then you're stuck with this weird like overhang that just looks funky, doesn't make sense. And I think you're supposed to maybe stick like a trash can there, but it still just looks funky. And it bothers me, and it's just, it's something 
that I will never get over because we are 10 years into this game and it has bothered me since day one and it, it just ugh. so that's what I, I just fixed it here I just I did an end thing and then another end thing because it's not really that noticeable and yes technically it's a broken cabinet but there's enough cooking space in this kitchen that it's fine right that it's completely fine it is occurring to me now as I'm watching this did I put a sink in this kitchen I think I did I hope I did if I didn't I will put a sink in this kitchen before I upload it but I think I put a sink in this kitchen I hope I did I'm just thinking back through the footage I'm watching it live with you I can't remember we'll see <laughs> I also struggled really hard with this dining table because of the matching wood situations and like I'm trying to get really more comfortable with the idea of like the woods don't have to match completely but like dude sometimes the woods have to match you know like sometimes if you're gonna put a dining set together the woods need to match or they need to mismatch in a oh there is a, a sink in there good phew <sighs> um they need to match in a way that like a, or mismatch in a way that at least makes sense and it's so hard to match wood tones in the dining selection like it's bad enough amongst the other other furniture but you can kind of get away with it I don't think a single dining chair matches a single dining table at this point. My goodness, it's insane. The lighting in this room also kind of kicked my tail because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I just knew like none of the lights were really hitting it for me. I think I wanted a little bit more like, I, I was thinking like a little bit more rustic, but not like rustic rustic, you know? I don't know. And this is the part where it really starts going orangey. You start noticing me putting a lot more orange touches in, which was not my intention. And honestly... Well, I was going to say not a color I'd paint the kitchen, but you know what? Actually, that is incorrect because growing up, I had an orange kitchen. My, um, my parents, when they moved into their house, my aunt is an interior decorator, um, or was actually, she's a, um, esthetician now, but she was an interior decorator and she asked if she could paint my parents' house for them. And it was very sweet. And my mom said, sure, as long as I can pick the colors. And so they went and they picked this beautiful sort of soft muted beige and they ordered it and it showed up in the house and my aunt started doing that very sort of um, 90s textured wall, the like sponge painting thing. And it was bright orange, but my aunt was like so proud of the work she had done and like didn't quite put together that the, the colors weren't right. And so my mom walked in and was like, well, I guess we have an orange kitchen and it was orange. Um, until I was 14 and then my house was open concept and the washing machine in the downstairs half bath exploded. Basically the seal, it was a front loading dishwasher and the seal on the door failed. So the water came gushing out and the sensor that reads when there's enough water in the tank, it never got to that sensor to turn it off. So we had started it and then we're out just doing stuff all day. Actually, like in the yard, nobody went inside for like three or four hours. We came back in three or four hours later and I have the most distinct memory of my little brother running for the downstairs bathroom because, you know, he had to use the restroom and he got halfway like into the living area and just started like sloshing, like looked like he was running through a lake in the carpet and my parents went, oh, and then um, basically all of the sheetrock downstairs like I think it was like 48 inches up had to be pulled out because it was a safety risk because my mom is very very asthmatic and so we were like we can't have anything that could have potentially even remotely gotten even a little bit wet in here um so we had to replace the furniture and we had to replace all the sheetrock and all of that and of course it is impossible to match 90s orange sponge painting so my parents painted the house gray with a red wall uh, in one area and gray with a green wall in the other and it looked really cute i'm not going to lie to you and say it didn't but i am convinced that's where my deep hatred of gray <laughs> happened because my house was so light and bright with these pretty like light tan walls everywhere and this orange kitchen just absolutely beautiful and bright and they painted it gray and look they know my opinions on this this is not new so if you're watching mom and dad hi i love you i still will never understand why you painted the house gray it's fine <laughs> but like oh my god why um yeah because again we lived in western washington everything was gray every building every like the sky just everything was great i never understood the gray and then it was so funny because like like when when we went to sell like the first thing the realtor said was like wow that's a lot of gray and i was like yeah <laughs> 
for the record, my room was tan, because I much prefer warm, happy colors. I'll never understand gray. I will never. I, I went on a rant about this. Uh, where were we? We were driving through town, and somebody had just painted their house gray. And admittedly, it was a pretty gray, but they did gray with a gray roof, and I just went, why though? <laughs> why? And my poor parents were in the car with me because we were all going someplace together, and they were just like, are you good? No, I'm not good. In this living room, I kind of didn't have a plan again. I know, story of my life. But I, I started kind of messing with it. And all of a sudden, the idea of, like, Americana kind of came into my head. I think it was the blue um, on the coffee table that started it. And I kind of had this, like, well, what if it was, like, Ikea catalog styled very Americana? You know, that, like, that, like, kind of Street of Dreams vibe that, like, very put together and I started doing that and then I was like well what if it was homey but staged by Americana and so that's kind of where we ended up lots of reds and blues but not like in your face some rustic wood some mismatched wood tones um I tried to do lots of like what's the word like not it's not polished it's the other kind of like it's burnished that's not right there's a, a um brushed maybe brushed is the right word like a brushed metal vibe and then I went ahead and put a little desk space back here because it seemed like a good place for it next to the coat closet or just closet in general. Like in The Sims, it doesn't really matter. In reality, this would be a nice just storage space for outdoor stuff, maybe kids, you know, stuff. I put some hobbies out here and then I will actually change this room just a little bit um, down the road because I will decide we have a dog at some point. And then with that, I will decide we ha that our kid is of toy playing age and I will put actually the toy bin out here because there's not a lot of room in her room but also like I know there are households where kids toys stay entirely in their room and in my house when we weren't playing with the toys the toys went in our room but when we were playing with the toys the toys were always out and my parents were really cool about the like if you're playing with it and you go have lunch or you want to play with it all weekend long or whatever they can stay in the living room that's fine we had I had junk all over the living room always um and so I, I put a toy box out here so that the kids could just play out here. Because that seemed like, to me, the place where they would probably be playing the most. That picture of the uh, marigolds or daisies or something above the fireplace is actually a television. So there is a television in this room to be able to watch. Um, I believe it was Joey on Friends said, what is your furniture all pointed at then? At the TV. But also at the um, fireplace, which would be very warm and cozy. In here... I gave, again, once again, went with quite a few different hobbies on the desk because uh, in my head, this time I was designing for as a single mother with a daughter. And so I was like, well, a lot of streams of income would be nice for this family because it's going to be one sim or all of this money to maintain this house. And you know me, I have no idea how to build a cheap house. I should really do a starter home build again. I should really, you know what I always do? I always say I'm gonna build a starter home and then I say I'm gonna build a base game starter home and I lock myself into these really hard challenges and that's not like a bad thing but I never let myself just do the starter home challenge without base game I should do that you just planted that in my head thank you so here I was trying with this horse figurine to kind of get that like um, magazine spread vibe you know sometimes you like look at even like the dorm room ones um, when you're like looking at pottery barn and stuff and you're like why is there just a weird statue in your living room but it kind of works I did that, but that all changes when we bring the toy box in, so don't get too attached to that statue. And I think it actually might, the statue might end up on the other side of the room, I can't remember now. I got to use the tiles from Love Struck. I love those tiles, I want so badly to put them in the Sims 4 studio and make more versions of them, because I love them, but they're a little bit bright, and I'm like, if I could get some muted swatches and some different tile sizes and stuff in there, perfection. I want like a thousand swatches on this, and I'm honestly tempted to just do it, and then just put it up somewhere for y'all and you guys can be like wow these are really kind of low quality and weird and I can be like yup but <laughs> also if you're wondering how I did them behind the um window there it won't tile naturally like that but you can stick them behind the cabinets and as far as I can tell it doesn't matter because they're flat so they don't seem to affect anything please let me know if that's incorrect but I had no pathing issues with that so I just stuck some lower down technically they don't match the pattern of the tiles but you can't really tell unless I'm pointing it out to you so um yeah here I, I put this down and I the coffee maker does work anything placed on the little side one that's in the fridge doesn't seem to want to work so I just stuffed it full of like things so they wouldn't put stuff on there seems to work easy enough please let me know if you have pathing issues and I will fix it um and either re-upload or just like put a note on there that it needs to be fixed 
This is the parents' bedroom. Pretty sparse because it's a small bedroom and I didn't want to pack it full of stuff and have pathing issues. So I kind of, yeah, I'm messing with the windows because I realized they were uneven. Um, and they're still kind of uneven and they just kind of have to be because of the outside and the, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Closet. There we go. Sorry. I'm a little brain dead. It was a very long week at work and I still have to go back to work tomorrow. So what you're hearing is my brain just like running on one cylinder. <laughs> There's like one cylinder firing left. Um, I wanted to put some sort of like shelving in here. I struggled with it. I ended up going with that really cute one from the artist's kit. I love the artist's kit. Oh, also I did a custom thing. Look, it's the, uh, it's the everyday clutter, I think. And the dog thing from pets and pets and dogs. Yes. Cats and dogs. Um, and it kind of makes this cute little like single wall hanging, even though it's two. So you get to have your keys and your dog, um, leashes and stuff. I think it looked really cool. And I just like this in here because I thought it kind of looked like maybe she kept some journals, maybe some sketchbooks and stuff in here in her quiet space. Uh, a nice little decor piece without being busy. And again, I kept this room kind of simple because it, it's a bedroom. It just needs to be simple. It needs to be a place to sleep and a place to chill out. And that's about that, you know? Um, realistically, a bedroom doesn't have to be super busy. And in fact, it's better if it's not for sleeping and stuff. Hung some things on the wall. I tried really hard to make this work because I thought it'd be really cute if the, the bags were hanging from the same hook. But I couldn't quite get them to line up right because I clipped with the, the hat and stuff. Realistically, we could probably ignore it, but I I just didn't love it enough. And I've got some candles and some cozy lighting. It's really, it's a nice room. I, you know, I don't think I put curtains on the side window. Okay, well, I'll fix that before I put it up. It just occurred to me. I don't remember doing that. And yeah, I'm not seeing it in the video, so I don't think I did. Well, you know, curtains are the bane of my existence, so it's not terribly surprising. Here is where we started getting life and death stuff. And here is where I went a little crazy with life and death because the the bathroom stuff is gorgeous, is stunning. I don't think we got a new toilet, so the toilet is base game, I believe. But this bathroom, the cabinets, look at those. And I thought they looked appropriately like old but renovated because that was kind of the goal with this house. Is like I imagined that they had moved in not long ago. And it had been kind of tastefully updated. And what's the thing everyone updates in a house? The bathrooms. You have to because they're the thing that gets the grossest. Excuse me, I have the hiccups now. But look at that bathtub. Can we just... A moment of appreciation for the bathtub. Holy. A moment of appreciation for the bathtub. I think I end up going with wood in the bathroom. No, I think that's actually tile, but it's a brown tile. Looking at this now, I think I would have gone back with wood in the bathroom and just made some statement about like, well, it's tile, but it looks like wood because I personally love the look of when the wood floors go all the way into like a half bath. I think that's really nice, but I recognize anywhere where there's a tub, there should not be wood floors. Totally get it. So here's the little kids room. Uh, I went with a pretty yellow room, which is my favorite way to do kids rooms. Definitely just leaned into what I know. Definitely went with a lot of horse ranch stuff because I just think it's so pretty. I just, I love the kids bed in horse ranch. Actually, this is just a single bed and an adult could sleep on it too. I kind of wish I could find this comforter in a queen size in real life and I would put it into my comforter rotation because it's so dang pretty. It's so dang pretty. Here I am putting the kids, um, toolbox, that's not the word for it, toy box, there we go, into the living room so that they could come play. It matches the Americana theme just fine, although it looks a little purple against the blue wall. It is actually a blue, and on most monitors it's going to read a little bit more blue. Lots of toys in the kids' room, little farm stuff, lots of pretty little touches. I put some string lights in here and the cloud light, and then we painted a pretty color, and it's good to go. Very simple. It's occurring to me, again, I don't think I managed to put curtains in this room, so I'll fix that before I put it up because... The kiddo needs curtains. Oh, maybe I did put curtains up. Maybe I'm wrong. There you go. Prove me wrong. It's not actually been that long since I did this build, but I did it out of my normal routine, so a lot of this is a little bit memories to me. Um, on this monitor, those uh, yellows are clashing, so Amanda, I sure hope you fix that, but I don't think I do. I think I'd leave it, and uh, I will have to see on the other monitor how it looks. It is a very cozy, warm room, and I think it's a place for a lot of good memories, and I can see her having her little friends over, having lots of fun. Here I'm putting just something else in the dining room and remembering I need curtains in here <laughs> and then just some landscaping and stuff here. I went kind of, I was going to say sparse on the landscaping. I don't think sparse is the right word, but I just didn't like layer it quite as intently as I do sometimes. Put some fun uh, seating on the front porch and then a little cooking area on the back porch. I think just a barbecue and a um, 
two chairs and a table so that they could eat outside. And I'm trying to remember offhand now if I remembered to put um, something for the kiddo in the backyard. I know at one point I had intended to put the tree house back there, but the, the this part, the landscaping part, I had kind of done in a bit of a rush. I was trying to finish it before I had to go to a family dinner. So now I'm thinking I probably didn't remember to put the tree house in the back, but the tree house in the back would be a really cool thing. And maybe I'll fix that before I put it up in the gallery. The theme of this build is rapidly turning into, don't worry, I'll fix it. Um, put a lot of plants and stuff out here, but I tried to make them look like relatively low maintenance plants so that it was believable that a working mom could be taking care of them. Not that a working mom can't do anything they set their mind to, but let's be real. We should try to chill out on stacking responsibilities on them that they simply don't need. They're superheroes as it is. We don't need to keep stacking things on them. But here's the girl. And I always try to put like a little table nearby. Although I don't know if I did this time around because of the like squishiness of this little patio area. It's kind of small. Yep, and there's a little sitting area. You know, yeah, I don't think I put the tree out back, but I really wish I had, so maybe I'll do that. Although, in my world, this is right next to a park I built for the channel not too terribly long ago, so the kiddo is like a hop, skip, and a jump, quite literally, from the playground. In fact, you can see it here as we're talking, so it wouldn't be that hard for that kiddo to go play and have fun. It would be a lot load, which is annoying, but if you're not actively playing the kid and they're just going, and then you hop back to the parental, it'd probably not be that bad. I really wanted to use those white flowers and on some lots those white flowers are really pretty but for some reason on this lot those flowers looked hella gray so I gave up on them I ended up going kind of pink and purpley those and they're more like peach I guess than pink and I think if I recall I ended up putting some more bushes down and maybe a white but I can't remember so don't quote me on that but yeah pretty simple I didn't go like super big bushes like I normally do I tried to I tried to tone it back a little bit is hard for me because you know me and my like I would just like to pepper everything with flowers I love these little flowers I can't remember what they're called offhand those little pretty tall white ones they're such a nice little flower to layer in and here I'm trying to make this uh, area look just a little bit more put together I know at one point I had intended to put a hose down but I don't think I did a hose would have been great there I really like these these windows are so hard to put any sort of uh, what's the word I'm looking for shutter on and I, I didn't put them on every window. I know, like, some people, if, if they were functional shutters, they would need to go on every window. These were just fill out the wall shutters, so not a big deal. But here's the screenshots, and I have been talking incessantly at you for a very long time, so I think I'll leave this here and let you just enjoy the screenshots. I really like this build. I'll get it up on the gallery for you soon. But, and I really like the story it tells, I think, too. I think it's a, I think it's a good one. But let me know what you think. I'm excited to hear your feedback. I hope you're having a good day and you're feeling loved. And if you're not feeling loved, please know I love you. I'm glad you exist. I'm glad you're here hanging out. You make the world a better place just by being you. And I do mean that. Uh, next up should be a Minecraft something or other. And then more speed builds. And with that being said, I will talk to you soon. Love you. Bye.